Now, now you've done like um, trips of four, Philadelphia, Hamilton. Like, you know, you've done trips of four. I mean, what trips have you taken? Like, where have I gone? Yeah. Road trips-wise? Yeah. In Florida a bunch of times. uh, You know, New York a bunch of times. Boston, Providence. I like those places. Toronto, Montreal. Huge fan of those. I've only been to uh, Ohio once before. That was uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. But I always did want to check out Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it didn't disappoint. And uh, Hamilton didn't disappoint. I love America. I want to see every... Every mile is awesome country, mm-hmm. you know. So, and I like to take road trips too. You know, I like uh, I like Pittsburgh. Although uh, I don't know if that's cool to say in the Cincinnati area. It sounds like you guys got some kind of rivalry going on, especially with sports. You know. Really. But yeah, it was at the stadium today, uh, Red mm-hmm. Stadium. They call Great American Ballpark. Love all the statues around it. You know, I'm a huge baseball fan. All the old school right. Reds statues. Oh, wow. So, how long did it take you to get So, what was your trip like? So, what did you do? How did you get to Hamilton? I mean, you, you drove, you and your bud drove around up here. Well, you, you, asked, you asked one of your friends. You, have, you left the wife and the kid at home and asked one of your friends to come on up, you know, to, you know, to take you up there. It'll be easier for you to drive. You guys drove a long time. You drove, but it took you, how long did it take you to get up here? It was supposed to be nine and a half hours, but, I mean, anybody who lives in the Philly area knows, like, the traffic's bad a lot, especially on a Friday when I left, left Friday like mid morning, mm-hmm. uh, which you wouldn't think the traffic would be that bad, but yeah, I mean, just to get onto the PA Turnpike it took an extra hour. It's all you need is one accident, you know, and it's gonna hold you up. And then I think I uh, got around Pittsburgh, of course, just a rush hour, and then went past there. Uh, as soon as I got to Ohio, they were doing road work for the first 60 miles, right? Um, then I ran into a little bit around Columbus, probably like, I don't know eight hours I mean no nah, like I don't know I don't know exactly at what point I got to Columbus but nine and a half hours ended up taking like eleven and a half oh. and it was kind of like a bar you know uh, there's not a whole lot going on not even a lot of like lights on the way here even though there was uh, I think it was like mostly the turnpike it was still kind of dark mm-hmm. so yeah like everything that could have slowed us up did yeah so okay but well you know I was wondering um, so you left, I guess, what, like 11 o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. Like yeah. So what was the most, <laughs> what was the most memorable things happened like on the way here? All right. Um, I could tell you, I got here, I got in the town. It was, uh, I was exhausted. I was starving. So I stopped at the waffle house right around the corner from the hotel. And, uh, it was kind of memorable how nice everybody was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, for some reason they knew I wasn't from, from the area. Like they, I, I don't know wasn't wearing anything that said Eagles or anything, but, you know, they, they said, like, uh, where are you coming in from? Like, how do you know I'm not from here? They're like, you're not from here. But anyway, so I'm talking to, like, a couple of people, and then a couple more people started talking. We started talking about the food, you know, uh, trying to stay somewhat lean. It wasn't a whole lot of super healthy stuff on the menu. So, but, yeah, I got I don't know, an egg omelet. It was probably the best I could have done there. And then uh, I think they, they messed it up. They told me they messed it up. I thought it was fine. They're like, no, I'll give you another one. I messed this one up. That's the wrong kind of ham, even though I had half eaten it. And then they give me another one. So, yeah, after a while, I think I made, like, ten new friends in there. So that was pretty memorable. Where was the scent? Waffle House. Uh, is it Springdale or something? Oh, okay. Yeah, we had one in Hamilton. It's really nice. They don't get good food. You know, that was the first one I've ever been to. Oh, yeah. I also drive to South Carolina a couple times, like uh-huh. Charleston, Myrtle Beach, places like that. And I passed a Waffle House literally, like, uh, every 50 feet for, like, 900 miles. And I never stopped it. So that was the first one I've ever been to, and uh, yeah, it was good. Every bit is as good as I kind of heard it was. Uh huh. Hey, the best service, friendly people. Yeah, well, you know, the thing was though. Um, um, the thing was, you know, like, you know, so far as that is, like, you know, you came here. I went. Remember, I went to with my cousin. We went up. You know, we're from Ohio. We went up to Kenosha, Wisconsin, and like, you know, and. Immediately, we went to Kenosha, Wisconsin, because his sister lived up there. So, you know, we we had two together, so we all went, had fun. Of course, we went through those tolls. And um, as soon as we got, we started hanging out with the family there. And, of course, they didn't know anything about us, but they knew. Are you, they're like, are you guys from out of town? You sound a little bit different. The accent, I'm like, yeah, we're from Ohio. I knew the accent would be too much different. I'm not real familiar with how people from Wisconsin talk. 
Yeah. Uh, probably the same. Yeah, like probably upper Midwest as opposed to maybe your. It took us about it took us about eight or nine hours to get there. So. Yeah, but, I guess the accent would change a little. But bit. But it's kind of a similar. It was a similar distance for you for here. So. Yeah, but I think in a different direction though. Yeah. So I mean, to an East Coast person, I think you guys would all sound the same. I don't know if I could differentiate somebody from Wisconsin versus somebody from Cincinnati area. Uh-huh. It would probably would sound slightly different though. But I mean, it was at the same distance though for eight yeah. like eight hours travel. So. So but, I guess it was easy for them to spot me. Oh yeah, well. Yeah, well, you know, people travel all the time though, across the country and everything. That'd be kind of cool though. Like travel to the world, like it would be great though to travel across America and stay different places. And don't you wish like you could live somewhere for like? So, well, I mean, it's not a good thing to have some foundation stability. That's important. But it'd be kind of it'd be that fantasy to you know to move around the country, like stay at this place once in a while, stay at this place, and then you know get a taste of every country, like almost like hide out, like. No one knows where you're from, and you meet all these people from different places. You pose as a citizen for the town or something. I think that would be cool. That would be I fun. Think people can now do that a little bit more. Or what do they call them? Like digital nomads, right? Yeah. Like you have people who work online. Uh huh. Can just kind of pretty much live anywhere. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm doing like more online fitness, which is kind of like taking off. You know, what I mean, it's not the same as face to face, but I do know people in my field, online trainers, that actually can do that. And uh, they're in Central America, then they're in Bali. Then they're in Eastern Europe because as long as there's an internet connection, you can work. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I would think that would be a cool thing to do. Yeah. So, okay. So, what what else is memorable? Did you guys have what? Um, did you have anything memorable that was really good on the way here besides that? Or I mean, anything like memorable was kind of like, oh God, not this. You guys had a traffic jam, right, on the way to Hamilton? Yeah. Um, I'm surprised at the amount of road work that they were doing in some of these places where nobody lives. But I guess you still gotta fix the roads up but i will say this that uh and some people might laugh at this the turnpike in ohio is pretty smooth compared to the roads in philadelphia and i would say probably all over pennsylvania really i think you guys do a great job here yeah yeah uh, i mean roads are smooth but again there's a if i live here all the time i'm waiting differently but ran into no problems you know what i mean like some of the places where i live you know the roads are kind of like bombed out yeah i don't i mean maybe hasn't really snowed much in the last couple of years, but I don't know what makes giant potholes. But well, sometimes they put cones in the potholes so big that they put a cone there. You can't even see the cone, you know, because mm-hmm. they're, they're so deep. It's like a bomb hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right, and right. And some of the roads are so narrow, you know what I mean? They, like, if they can't put a cone there anyway because you'd, you'd hit it. You can't go around it. So, yeah, I would say last year I probably had five flat tires. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to get a different car because the potholes in my area were destroying my car. Yeah, so far as fitness, though, have you, like, trained a lot of people? Yeah, yeah. Uh, What's your most memorable person you've trained, like, as far as, like, working out and stuff like that? Uh, some college athletes, mm-hmm. you know, they were, that went on to be big time. Uh, I would say that they might be the biggest name, but I would say the most memorable thing was um, trained sometimes called, like, tactical athletes, like soldiers. Uh, cops, firefighters, you know, people who kind of like need fitness for their job. So there was uh, this one soldier, you know, he, uh, he was injured, ended up having a stroke and everything like that. So it kind of totally rehabilitated him. I mean, he was really declining, you know. I mean, a, I don't know exactly what his deal was with physical therapy. I think he was done. His insurance didn't cover anymore. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they called me up and then, yeah, like he wasn't able to really walk that well. I mean, we started, uh, you know, going like he couldn't really stand, and then he was like on a walker, okay. And then we were doing a cane, and then he, you know, he was kind of walking slowly on his own, and then you know, he kind of started like running. So, I mean, he uh, totally could have went the wrong direction if, if he didn't have much heart. I mean, I can supply the science and the motivation, but it's still up to the person to kind of bring their A game, and that's what this guy did. I mean, he refused to decline. So that, to me, that's what's most memorable. I love those stories. So, plus, you know, again, I love America, uh, especially our soldiers. And I didn't want to see a hero go backwards in life, you know? Like, I didn't want to see somebody like that uh, just give up. And he rallied, and, you know, now he's living like an everyday person. Mm-hmm. So, to me, that's what's most memorable. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, well, you, um, the thing was, I, I don't know, I mean... What was like the toughest person you had to train though? I mean, honestly, you had to. Toughest person. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, I've been lucky. I've had a lot of great clients. Um, I will say that 
the toughest kind of person is the person that doesn't want to stop drinking. You know? Oh, Jesus. Uh, I mean, I get it, but there's really no way around those calories, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, what if we have a little bit of wine? Like, I mean, they, they kind of understand it, that they're sabotaging their own success, but, you know, I don't want it to be anybody's fault. Like, I want them to get to their goal, but uh, the toughest people are the people like, yeah, I can't give this up. I can't give up all this white bread. So, mm-hmm. you know, we try to, like, slowly wean off it. I send them, you know, great diet plans and everything like that. Um, but the evidence suggests as far as how alcohol slows up your metabolism, it takes away your testosterone. So they might know why they're not reaching their goal, but still, it doesn't make me feel good that i not helping them as much as I want, even though it's stuff that they're doing. You know, mm-hmm. so... I would say that I don't get a lot of those people, but when people say that, sorry, this is not negotiable, I have to continue eating this or drinking this, you know, or I have a lot of social functions where I might have to drink a lot. Mm-hmm. It just, they might not get to their goal on time. Right. Yeah. So you don't drink very much. Not, not very much. Mm-hmm. Well, right, like once a year, or once every two years, every day? Maybe, maybe once a year, a little bit. Yeah. So I went. Yeah, well, anyway, so what was, um, what like, what's your favorite food to eat? And what's the best food you've done, ate? I mean, if you want to recognize, you know, recommend anything in shape, what's the best food you've eaten constantly? Uh, anything, anything green and leafy is going to be the biggest bang for your buck as far as, like, uh, nutrients, mm-hmm. you know? Um, they don't taste bad either. Fiber, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fiber, you know, um, it's going to fill you up for longer, but as few calories as there is, factor in all the vitamins it gives you like mm-hmm. yeah it's a no-brainer you need more green leafy vegetables but um yeah like i love fruit love vegetables uh lean protein i mean i don't always eat i'm not six percent body fat you know i mean i don't always eat impeccably like i do try to enjoy myself a little bit so my favorite food's probably like uh like my mom's macaroni is good um I like steak, although, again, it's, you're trying to get uh, lean protein. There's better forms, like, say, chicken or turkey. But oh, if I had to cool. pick something, yeah, it would be uh, probably something my mom makes. Oh, uh, well, you know, so they, said the skin's bad. They, they said the skin is actually the worst for you over chicken. But the thing was, if you like to go to KFC or something, I mean, chicken, uh, the skin's the best part. So. And that wouldn't be the leanest form either. You know, it's uh-huh. probably, like, what, deep fried, right? Yeah. The, but it depends on what kind of commitment you, you want to have, you know? I mean, if you want to get your goals slower, you can afford to do that. If you're trying to, uh, you know, look amazing in a couple months for a wedding or, you know, fit into, like, a dress, make the team, you know, or say you're in, like, a combat sport where you have to be up against a certain weight, yeah, then you'd have to be a lot more strict. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so, so anyway, so... The, so um... Anyway, so is your wife interested in stuff like that? Is she just, does she like um, bodybuilding or something like that? No, but I mean, she's fit. Yeah, mm-hmm. she, uh, she exercises when she can. I mean, she's so busy, you know? I mean, she doesn't drink much either. Um, she tries to cook us all healthy foods. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, she, uh, she's a nurse, so that's like, oh, that's takes pr- up a ton of her time, and that is a big commitment in itself. Well, that's probably training how to take care of you guys, I guess. <laughs> she's probably all crazy stressed. So, yeah, she doesn't really have time to work out as much but yeah she still keeps herself uh, very active still eats right so since you've been in hamilton what what things have like caught your attention you've been in hamilton what things have caught your attention that it's not what i thought it would be you know i mean if you look at say rust belt cities along the map yeah you would see that i think this look like the city has like an industrial past kind mm-hmm. of like cincinnati or, it kind of still does downtown's kind of industrial they have all those trains going around and so with that like i like geography you know? my so grandfather worked my grandfather it's still there i think he worked at a smart paper factory downtown Oh, you know, paper factory, yeah. So if you look at, was it like a Youngstown, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, you would think that Hamilton would kind of be along the same lines. Right. Uh, but, no, nah, it's looks a lot more gentrified than I thought. It doesn't, it doesn't look like I thought it would look, you know? So, and then, you know, I heard they, they what, pump millions into it. I mean, there's parks everywhere, uh, or, like cool statues, cool, like uh, downtown, all the cool shops there. Do you it's remember? It's vibrant. It doesn't. It doesn't look dying at all. Do you remember the? Um, oh, one of my favorite thing about downtown Hamilton. One of my favorite things is the thing by the river. Did you know what I'm talking about? It was a. It was a big uh, monument had a soldier on top of it. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, but, I love it. Anything that has to do with why what makes America great. Yeah, you know, it was I'm like real fan. tall, like real tall. It was like right the river. It had this old soldier with his hat or something. By the, yeah, top yeah. Of, yeah. Just yeah, on the other side of the river. I like all the parks that run along the river. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I wasn't so much into like exercise science. I might have been like um, 
like the you... urban major or something mm-hmm. like uh, mm-hmm. an urban planner. That's yeah. me. It looks like they did a lot of great urban planning here. Uh-huh. Like how the whole thing just kind of flows together. Uh, it's revitalized. Were you um, were you at uh, Market Park? I don't know the name of the park. Mar- it's right there. It's it's got an amphitheater there. So what? It's right by yeah. it's right by Marriott. Yeah, it was the Marriott. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's got Marriott. It's, it's got it's got a sprinkler system too. The sprinkles go, go up. And I also like how on was it at Main Street? They have uh, like a little map. Like you are here. Uh-huh. Do you want to? drink there's these places you want to shop you want uh-huh. to eat there's these places so yeah it makes it really easy to get around it was that a big uh, statue of uh alexander hamilton is that who that was mm-hmm, yeah right is that right there by is that right there by um i think here it's like you know you you you, you pass the, you pass you go across the bridge go past the monument you go downtown you're almost at mcdonald's and that's uh, i think that's actually there you know that's alexander hamilton i believe so yeah, I, I know i saw that but yeah i did see the uh it was a soldier's monument that I yeah. thought was totally cool. Yeah, that's kind of green. Like I didn't realize the town would be so green and uh, cool flower beds everywhere. So again, mm-hmm. the urban planners uh, should really be proud of themselves. Yeah, there's it's like a symbol they use they use they use this um, soldier on the monument for a lot of symbols here in Hamilton. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's Hamilton here. So you got the Hamilton. Did you stop anywhere to eat or anything? A couple places um, besides the Waffle House. I don't really remember the names of any, just like local cool places on the strip. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, they have, some, good. they have some great places to eat here. They really do. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably eat something before I leave. Uh, not sure. Where should I go? Well. I'd like to pump more money for the local economy, especially since everybody in this town has been so nice to me. Uh-huh. I mean, I try to be nice to everybody, but uh-huh. like, it just seems like super genuine. Um, maybe like they're not even really going out of their way. I think that's just who they are. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, always happy to uh, help the local economy. That's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much, sir. Oh, it's great to be here, and thank you so much for having me. No problem.